This year is the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty the Queen. That is 60 years after she became Queen. And all over the UK and the British Commonwealth, people are making tributes to her to celebrate this happy occasion. Last Monday, Brady and I were filming in the lab and suddenly we had a mad idea. We ought to do a tribute from periodic videos because after all, diamonds are chemicals. The first problem was we needed a diamond, but very fortunately we used diamonds, very little ones, for our infrared spectroscopy. And one of my students had broken the mount of one of the diamonds, so we had one that we couldn't use for science. So that problem was solved. The next question was what to do with a diamond, and the obvious thing is to put a picture of Her Majesty onto the diamond. The difficulty is, that first of all our diamonds are rather small and secondly there are real issues about trying to write on the surface of a diamond. Diamond is made of carbon and the carbon atoms are all bonded together which makes it really very hard. In fact a piece of diamond is a single molecule because all the atoms are joined together. Fortunately, my colleagues in the Nanotechnology Center have a really good engraving machine which uses accelerated ions of gallium and can really make an image on almost any surface because these gallium ions are going like bullets at huge speed and will chip off material from any surface. But that in itself produces another problem because the gallium ions are electrically charged, they're positively charged. And so when they hit the surface, if it doesn't conduct electricity, the surface will charge up and eventually will get so positively charged that the electric field deflects the ions away from your picture. And diamond is not electrically conducting. When we took the diamond along to have a picture put onto it, we tried a number of different settings. First of all, we just tried it with the diamond and we got quite a nice picture of the Queen but it was very foggy. Now you could say that was really good because the year she became Queen there was the worst fog in London that anybody could ever remember. You could hardly see more than a few feet in front of you but it doesn't make a very good picture. So then we put a very thin layer of carbon, black carbon that conducts electricity on the surface. And then when the ions hit the surface they could gouge out the image because our thin layer was so thin that it didn't affect the engraving but it did conduct away the electrical charge. All right. All right, let's do it. And I think that the result is really pretty pleasing. It looks very like the Queen and from the scientific point of view, it looks very like the picture that we used to make it. You can put one on top of the other and they match perfectly. There we go. Thanks. So, that is a, a sample fit for a queen. So, here is the diamond. It's really very small. You can hardly see it. And unlike a jewel diamond, it is just cut as a simple triangular prism. And of course, the pictures of Her Majesty that are on the diamond are so small that without a microscope, you can't see them at all. The um, image, the larger image, is nearly 100 microns high, 92 microns high, 64 microns wide, the smaller one is half that size, so 46 microns high and 32 microns wide. If you're interested in statistics, you could get 300,000 odd images of this size onto a single postage stamp. For those of you who don't live in the UK, we have a picture of the Queen on all of the UK postage stamps. So there is the, really the question, what do we do with this? And 
Brady's idea is that we should send it to the Queen, though I'm not sure what she would do with it. I think that we should perhaps ask around and find out if there are any exhibitions either here or more widely in the UK of interesting objects connected with the Diamond Jubilee and let them show it. But we'd be interested to hear if you have any ideas what we should do with this now we've made it.